just works real well. Yeah. Give me a quarter. <laughs> I actually have one of the little swiper thing, credit card swiper things. Well, I was actually had it. It should be a model of us when it's square credit card swiper. Okay. Because I taught a class about that kind of thing. Anyway, so um, chapter 17 and 18. I'm skip, I skipped a chapter. I'm going to come back to it if. I would really love to because it's an easy question for the test. So, but fiscal policy, you kind of already talked about this. This is the government using their taxes and spending primarily to manipulate the economy. They say the economy is going too slow. Well, let's do some more spending to speed up the economy. That's the decision. Then they're like, well, okay, now we need to figure out what we're going to spend it on. The economy is growing too fast. Well, we need to slow things down. Well, let's not spend too much. And then we're going to figure out what we're going to cut back. For most of us, our spending decisions are, you know, crap, I need electricity. What's my power bill? I need a cell phone. What's the bill? I need cable TV. What's the bill? So you think about what you need, and then the amount that you spend each month is based on that. But the government is looking at the how much do we need to spend, and then we figure out what is the best way to spend that amount. And increasing their spending or decreasing their spending is going to impact the economy, and that's sort of their goal here, is impact the economy. So sometimes they may spend money on something that doesn't really need to be spent on, but it's just a matter that they're spending it to get that money out in the hands of people, to keep the economy moving to create jobs. So, they have two kinds, discretionary and non-discretionary. The word word of discretionary is discretion. When have you ever seen that word in your life? Warning labels. Warning labels for what? TV shows. If you are discretion advised, what, what shows are they putting that in front of? Dirty. Oh, no, it's Warning, y'all, there's some messed up stuff about to come on this screen. And we're giving you a warning now that you need to make the decision. You need to make the conscious decision. Are you going to watch this or not? Because don't come back to us later complaining about it because we're warning you now. Get the kids out of the room, right? You make the conscious decision. I'm going to watch this show even with all of the whatever it's going to have going on there. High naked zombies cutting heads off of people with chainsaws. I don't know. Whatever. You've been warned. So don't come complain. So that's what happens. You make a conscious decision to watch it show in spite of whatever. The discretion of your fiscal policy is the government making a conscious decision to buy something, to sell something, to do whatever. We are, we're going to decide, well, we're going to spend $3 million on missiles, $2 million on police cars. Five million dollars on chainsaws. That's discretionary spending. That's what you do. I'm going to spend my sixty dollars for my direct TV bill. I'm going to spend my sixty dollars for my Verizon bill. I'm going to spend forty-five dollars for whatever you spend forty-five dollars on. Right. Yeah. The video game. You, that's discretionary spending. There's non-discretionary spending that we're going to get to a little bit. Do they do the spending? But they don't predetermine the amount because they don't know what that amount is. Like unemployment benefits. They don't know how many people are going to be unemployed next month, right? So they don't know how many checks they're going to be cutting next month, right? They just know we're going to spend that month. We're going to be paying people unemployment benefits. We don't know how much it's going to be. Food stamps. We don't know how many people are going to be applying for SNAP next month. We just know that when they do and they qualify, we're going to be giving them the food stamps, right? So that's not discretionary. It's kind of an automatic thing. The economy improves, maybe these go down. The economy gets worse, these go up. But there is not the conscious decision of how much to spend. They know how much you can spend on missiles and chainsaws, but they don't know how much you can spend on unemployment benefits or 
that kind of thing. Does that make right. sense to you? Y'all have the same thing. You, you, you know your cable bill. You know your cell phone bill. You know your rent payment. You know your higher insurance payment. You know how much you can spend in gasoline? Yeah. No, but you know when that yellow light comes on, you're filling up, right? Uh, do you know how much you can spend in the grocery store this week? Depends. No, you know, it, it, it depends. You start to take a guess, but you know, naturally when you go down the aisle and you see that thing that is for you, and you just can't open it and jump in the bucket, to the basket, all that, whatever that word is, all right? You don't know how much you can spend on gasoline. You don't know how much you can spend in the grocery store. Fill it up possibly. No, you got some ballpark guesses, but you don't know. And there, yeah, you don't know what the price. You know you're gonna be getting a gallon of milk, but you don't know if milk is more expensive or less expensive this week than last. You don't know if our shoes is more or less than last week. You have a ballpark idea, but you don't exactly know what it is. Very few people go to the grocery store saying, "Whoop, I got a hundred dollars to spend this week, and I'm gonna spend all one hundred of it." Okay, kids, we only got ninety five dollars worth of stuff in there. Everybody, pick out a pack of gum and go get another Gatorade. No, just tell me. Discretionary, not discretionary. So that is a question on the. I need you, Microsoft. That should be an extra credit question, not a test. True or false? Question on the test. True or false? That's your scale, please, Microsoft. Okay. As much as you grant it, would that be the easiest extra question? It's like, hey, Microsoft, sun draw, right? Those are two, two most obvious. So, uh, so, question on a test. Types of physical policies, discretionary, non discretionary. Different from, oh. Uh, okay, we're going to get to another one here in a little bit. Okay. But just hint, hint, point, point, no, so, question on a test. What are the two types of fiscal policies? Discretionary, non discretionary. There's going to be directions coming up shortly. But discretionary fiscal policy, this is where they're making that conscious decision to change how much they're going to take out of our paycheck and taxes or to change how much they're going to spend. And the goal is change GDP, get the GDP growing faster or slower. To change employment levels, either raise the unemployment rate or lower the unemployment rate. They ain't never gonna say, ooh, unemployment's too low, we need to get people out of work, right? How many politicians are gonna get reelected with that campaign? Vote for me, and I'll cause you to lose a job. Okay, control inflation, stimulate growth. These are the reasons why they would mess with us. I probably have this on another slide. I don't know because I wasn't expecting to get to this chapter today. Okay. Increasing government spending does what? Increases G, right? Which means, let me write for you. Oh, yes. Okay. If they increase government spending, they increase G. What happens if they instead they increase taxes? So they take more money out of your pocket. That leaves you less money to do what? We do less C business and you do less I, right? If the government cuts their spending, she goes down. So they can cut their spending by cutting their spending, or they can lower taxes, which is going to cut your or my spending, right? Either way, spending goes down, the GDP goes down, right? Or they could lower taxes, say we're gonna let you have more of your money and spend more of your money yourself. What are we gonna do with that extra money? Well, by crappy, we're gonna spend it, right? And businesses could say, well, we got more money, we're gonna invest it. Or they could simply increase their own spending. Either way, which I'm very slice ahead of myself here. Lowering taxes but raising their spending is gonna increase GDP. Raising taxes or lowering your spending is going to lower the GDP. It's just that simple. The goal is, do we want GDP to be bigger or littler? And then that's going to determine, well, which route are we going to go? Which route do we want to go? Well, we can either try to, I'll give you a hint, expand the economy or contract the economy. Remember the business cycle? What were the four parts? 
business consumers government. No, or there, there are four parts of the expansion, expansion, P contraction, control. Right? The business cycle. So if they want the economy growing, then they're gonna do the expansion everything. If they want the economy slowing down, not they don't want to keep us all the way into a recession, but sometimes you gotta hit the brake kind of on your car. You're driving down a highway with goal of getting to home or getting to work or getting to school, right? But sometimes in the process of going somewhere, you gotta hit the brakes. It's contrary to country, so you don't want to like go hit the brakes too much. Okay, so question on a test. The two policy the two policy directions, direct fiscal policy directions, expansion, contraction, question on a test. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Different from the other one that was discretionary and non-discretionary. Two separate questions. So, types and directions, right? So, if they want to expand the economy, I already talked about this. The goal is they want to increase the growth in the economy. And they do that when? During a recession, when the economy isn't growing fast enough. When things are going too slow, things are slowing down, that's when they need to speed up. If you're on an interstate and you look down and you're doing 40 miles an hour and slowing down, what are you going to do? You're going to hit the gas pedal, right? Before that tractor trailer behind you ends you over. So, that's the expansionary policy. The goal increase growth, do it during a recession. How do they do it? We just sort of talked about it. I told you I was very slice ahead. They increase G or they lower taxes, which is going to lower C, I mean, increase C or in, and increase I, right? Okay, I is. I is business yeah. investment, and G is C is consumer spending. So cons consumer spending goes up, investment goes up because taxes went down, we've got more money, or they would increase G, right? That was that thing that I did. You ain't got to worry about the letters, but that's just for those of you that have C plus I plus B plus X tattooed on your arm and you're wondering what you're thinking. At least it's coming back around again. Or they could do a little bit of both. So, uh, spend a little bit more and cut our taxes so we can spend a little bit more. Or they can do all the extra spending or they can lower taxes so we do all the extra spending. Uh, each of those three options, increasing their spending, lowering taxes, or both. In all three cases, you're going to get GDP growth. That's just pure math, right? C or I or G goes up on end, and GDP on the other side of the equation has to go up. You will get higher employment because more work is getting done. You will get higher inflation. That's the one thing about you. When you're speeding things up, do you remember when we were growing the economy, the one thing that we had was prices going up. Because they're increasing demand. Increasing demand that apparently wasn't needed or else it would have already been there. Right? Kind of thing. So they're increasing demand, maybe artificially increasing demand. And what happens when demand increases? Prices go up. So you will get higher prices. But what happens to the government's finances? We'll have three out outcomes here. If they lower government spending, I mean, increase their spending without raising taxes, that would be like you do not get a pay raise when you start spending more each month. How financially sound is that? You know, Jenny only makes $100 a week and she starts buying 110 Dr. Peppers a week. What's going to happen? That, she, yeah, she's going to have to start borrowing or something. It ain't stable. She's going to have to start cleaning out her savings account. She's going to have to start borrowing money. She's going to have to start stealing out of grandma's pocketbook. She's going to have to do something, right? Okay, what up? Option number two. She keeps buying the same amount of Dr. Pepper, but she works less hours. So instead of her making $100 a week and getting $100, she now cuts back to $100. Yes, instead of working 40 hours a week, she now works 30 hours a week, and if she wants to keep buying the same amount of stuff as before, that's what would happen when the government lowers their taxes. They keep spending the same, 
but then but their income is lower. You get the same result there, right? The spending is larger than the income. Whether spending is larger than income because spending went up, or because spending is larger than income because income went down. Or if they did them both at the same time, well, spending goes up at the same time, income goes down. How can they afford that? Yes, how can they afford that? Uh, that's why expansionary economic policy, for all the good that it is, comes with some very real headaches. Inflation and the government's finances getting screwed up. They have to borrow this money. And who is borrowing the money? The government. Who is the government? We the people. So is the United States government ever going to go bankrupt? No. Is the United States government ever going to skip town and take your money and go to Rio? No. So Haley, if you had a choice between lending money to me or lending money to the government, who would you rather lend money to? The government. Who, who would you rather lend money to? The government? Or Dr. Roberts, the government, because a love in the death, but there is a chance that Dr. Roberts might be killed in a car wreck in the next month, right? <laughs> but is, is Uncle Sam going to be killed in a car wreck in the next year? No. So guess what? Because Uncle Sam is out there saying, I'll borrow money. But guess what? Not only am I over here saying, Haley, Haley, I'll pay you a higher interest rate. Suddenly, Dr. Roberts has got to be, I'll pay you a higher interest rate to lend to me instead of. To Uncle Sam. Which we're going to get to this later in this chapter. I'm sort of going to. Or actually, it might be three chapters away. Now. But that's the thing crowding out. It's harder for us to borrow because the government's doing this when they're expanding. Interest rates are going to be going up. And ooh, interest rates are going up. So what's that going to do? It's going to be harder for me to borrow money to buy a house, harder for you to borrow money to buy a car, which is going to be less spending at a time when they're trying to do what? More spending. So by them doing the extra spending, it's going to cause some of us to do less spending. What's the government going to have to do? Even more spending. Because they got to do spending to make up for the problem, and then do the spending to make up for the problems that they're causing by trying to fix the problem. All right? So it's like you, know, you, you, you get a little cut on your arm. So you've got a little cut, and then you go to the doctor, and then you do what? They dig around that cut, and they make that cut a little bit bigger before they cut it. Or you got a cavity and you got a hole in your tooth, and then you sit there and they drill it and make that hole even bigger. So then there's that much more patching that has to be done, right? That's what's going on here. I mean, they would rather spend more than reduce taxes because, like you said, people, I mean, they're not sure they can spend it because they can spend it for a cost that's not. The answer to that is it depends. I'm going to come to that in a later chapter. Some people can say, yeah. Spending is better. Some people can say no, cutting taxes is the better option. It depends on what political party you are. But um, there was something I was going to say before you asked that question. So, okay. so, contractionary policy is you, know, you look down at the speedometer and you're going too fast, so you got to lift your foot off the gas, maybe even hit brakes, right? Sometimes if the economy is going too fast, Things are going too fast. It's too much demand for money. Interest rates are so high that people can't afford to ever buy a house. People can't afford to ever buy a car. And then if we can't afford to buy cars, then we're going to be hosed in a few years when our cars break down. We can't afford to buy new cars to keep working, right? So we can't have it go too fast. We can't have the inflation rate be so high that you know, grandma's paycheck month to month to month, it only gets adjusted once a year, but month to month to month, she's falling farther and farther behind. We can't do that. Generally, when costs push inflation, especially when that's getting high, the government's going to say, we need to slow things down. And the way they slow things down, it's the opposite direction. They'll either spend less, or they will raise taxes, which causes us to spend less. Or they don't do most. You always see people. The end result is they're going to spend less, we're going to spend less. Either way, less is going to get spent, less is going to get bought, less is going to get built. So the GDP is going to get smaller, but people are going to lose their jobs. So politically, what politician is going to get reelected by saying, hey, y'all, vote for me, I'm going to raise taxes and call somebody to lose jobs? No politician is going to. This one is politically kind of ugly, right? 
right? But sometimes it's necessary. And I'm trying to keep channeling my inner at the moment, but anyway. Contraction here, easy, but it's necessary. Y'all do you want. Okay. You will get lower prices because the government lowering its demand is going to lower demand, cost prices to get lower. Or they're going to lower our demand, cost prices to get lower. So if you're one of those people whose income doesn't get smashed, you're actually better off here. If you're on a fixed income and the government's contracting, prices are going down, but your paycheck ain't getting changed, woohoo! As long as you keep your job, you're not one of those suckers that loses the job, right? keep your job, you may actually end up coming out okay here. But this price adjustment, the price is going down, it's slow, it slowly happens because we use the word sticky in economics. Think about it. The gas truck comes to the gas station, fills up the tanks in the ground, and the truck driver goes in there and tells the gas station owner, uh, th th this truck load cost you more than it did last week. How fast is that? Gas station owner are gonna run out there and change the price on the pump. Yeah, same, same. They're gonna jack it. They're gonna be running out to the parking lot to raise the price. But if the truck driver comes in and says, "Hey, gas was cheaper this week. You got a little bit cheaper." They're gonna wait. How big of a hurry are they gonna be to walk across the parking lot to lower the price? Eh, they'll get there, but it's gonna take a little bit of time there. It's not their number one priority there. The price decreases happen slower than price increases do. But the nice thing about this, oh, doesn't that low interest rate as well? Yeah, interest rates end up being lower as a result because there's less competition for spending, so there's less of us competing for that money. Interest rates end up lower. The government budget deficit, you get the opposite effects. Their income stays the same, but their spending is lower. Or their spending, I can't remember what I said the first time, their spending stays the same and their income goes up. Either way, you know, they're financially more stable. They should be Jane drinking 100 bottles of Dr. Pepper and bringing home $200 a week. Score. She's financially more stable. But this is all the expansionary thing. That was when the government was here, it's being hero. I've talked about something that the government's hero. When things are getting screwed up, people are losing their jobs, they said, We're going to take the bullet, we're going to go and get, keep y'all getting screwed up, and y'all lose everything. That's what's going on. Let me go back and tell you the thing I remember earlier. When government's expanding, they're trying to create jobs. They're doing extra spending to create jobs to keep you from losing your job. Maybe you create a job for you. They're going to go in debt to do it. Because what happens to you if you lose your job? You're hosed, right? Yeah, that you're, you're going to be on welfare, unemployment, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, you're going to be a problem for them in the future. But even right now, how long can you go without pay before you're financially ruined? Well, yeah, we can't be out of work very long at all. The government can take that hit better than we can. Because the government's pulling off of all 350 million of us, not just you. So this is where the government's being hero, and that's what they're doing. Y'all aren't spending enough because we're, our economy's in trouble, so we're going to borrow the money to do whatever, and we're going to do that extra spending that you're not doing to keep the economy from getting worse. Expansionary policy is that right to roads. Next time you see a politician, give them a hug. No, I like to say that, no, it's a, it makes sure somebody's showing you, then you can you know, put it on the CMT or whatever on Sunday. Um, I show you today, uh, the Veterans Day service day, and I don't know Sparrow or she I don't know who she is. Uh, uh, she's District 7, she's Congressman. Oh, okay. Is that District 5? Yeah. Yes. I keep hearing the better. Anyway. So the more taxes increases, the more money that they get to get to pay off their debt. Yes. They get more money and they can just pay off their debt. Let's think about it. for you, for Jenny. If she's spending, if her spending is more than she's making, she's like, I want to drink 150 Dr. Peppers a week, but I'm only making enough money to buy 100 Dr. Peppers a week. What are her options? Number one, she can increase her income. All right, get a second job, get more hours on the job to where she's making enough money to buy the 150 Dr. Peppers. Number two, she can lower the spending. Say, well, maybe I don't need 150 Dr. Peppers. Let me drink 120 or 100. 
which 100 a week is still kind of insane, right? <laughs> or she could, instead of getting a job, she could borrow money from the bank or from friends or somebody like that in order to get the extra money that she needs in order to buy the 150 Dr. Peppers that she wants a week. She can take it out of grandma's pocketbook. Well, that's the second job, is a fee, right? So that's work to steal it out of grandma's pocketbook. Maybe not a whole lot of work, because grandma's here days, they're not out of It's still a kind of a job. Does she have any other options? Work more, spend less, borrow money. Die. That's <laughs> all Okay, can't die, I suppose. That's kind of work. <laughs> but this is it. <laughs> Shopping to Dr. Pepper down a field. Yes. So, no, she's going to get a casket that's got the red wood that's kind of the same color as the Dr. Pepper, you know, the mahogany and that thing. These are the only options that she has as a human being. Well, what options does the government have? No, the same. The same. We're okay. the people. Who is the government but we the people? They can increase their income instead of getting a second job and just raise our tax. They can lower their spending by uh, lowering their spending. They can borrow by selling government bonds, like the savings bonds, whatever you got, grandma bought you for graduation, and that kind of thing. But they do have one option that we don't have. They can print more money. Which causes inflation. Which can cause inflation, because you're just printing more and more dollar bills out there. And just like when I talk about you know, Spider-Man comic book number one, if everybody has one, then they ain't worth a whole lot. But if they're few and far between, they're worth it. But if they're Zillions and zillions and zillions of pictures of George Washington out there, then these pictures worth less. All right, Benjamin. Yeah, okay, you Benjamin is worth less. So, but I guess maybe we can print money for any of you that actually have a checkbook and you can write a check, <coughs> right? Write a check that's going to bounce to them. The government has no other options than that, than us, except for me printing more money. Like saying, maybe you could actually write a bad check or two and get away with that yourself. You can't do that. We decline checks. We run them in check. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. So we don't really. That's the only thing the government has. Otherwise, they got to do the same thing. Where? Because the government is us, right? I mean, they can print money just now. Well, now uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they, well, they can print a little bit more, but it's still going to get out there, even if they increase the amount that's printed by like well one percent. But something we'll talk about maybe is that money gets spent over and over again. So they put an extra dollar out there, but well, that extra dollar ends up in my pocket, then I end up handing it to Bobby at Food Line to buy something, and well, then the Food Line has that extra dollar, and they're going to take that dollar, they're going to pay Bobby with it. Bobby's going to take that, and he's going to use it to repay Haley, and Haley's going to use it to pay back a loan to Preston. Preston's going to use it to pay his drug dealer. That money gets spent. That extra dollar is going to get spent multiple times in the economy, so we're earning a little bit of extra money. A multiplier, it can have a big impact, so it's got to be little itty baby tweaks. Adventures with Mr. Scales. Yes. <laughs> I don't care what's going on in my supplements. It ain't really me. So, okay, I talked about this before. If the government does the borrowing that they do, they go, they're going in debt. That's what it means by a deficit. They are spending more each year than they're making. So they're going in debt. So to handle that debt, option number one is to borrow money, selling the bonds that we talked about. But then, like what I talked about, you and I are competing with the government to borrow money. Me and Dr. Roberts are competing with Uncle Sam to borrow that hundred dollars from Haley. So we're getting crowded out of the market because she's only got a hundred dollars to lend, right? And she lends to Uncle Sam, so me and Dr. Roberts are both hoes. Right. We, we've got nothing unless we pay a much, much higher interest rate. You're not going to get much interest from uh, Uncle Sam. Yeah. And Uncle Sam is not lending at this point. They're borrowing at this point. So there we go. So either way, some of us are not going to be able to borrow the money because the money ain't out there to be borrowed because Uncle Sam's got it all. Or some of us that can't borrow money, woohoo, but we had to pay a higher interest rate than we would have because we're competing against Uncle Sam. Suddenly, Dr. Roberts ain't the safest lender, the safest borrower in town, right? So he's got to pay more, which means I got to pay more, so I got to help beat him and Uncle Sam, right? So that's what happens for borrowing, crowding out of spray safe. Just think about you when you see like 
piglets or kid or puppies or whatever, whatever you're trying to nurse or whatever, and you know one of them gets in there and knocks the other one out of watch the movie Babe or whatever. Whatever movies. That's what I'm crowding out. So they're, they're muscling their way in and knocking somebody else out of the way so they ain't getting fed. Money creation. And we were just asking about has several headaches. As I said, the more Benjamins they create, the more of us have Benjamins, the less valuable each Benjamin is going to be. If you've got a bunch of Benjamins and somebody says, well, I'm going to pay you $10 an hour, you have got a bunch of Benjamins in the bank, what are you going to do? You ain't going to be that interested in working for them for a mere $10 an hour if you got a hundred thousand. So what do they got to do? Pay you even more, right? Which means that money is worth less to them. So the money is going to have less value because they print it, which means you've got to give more of these dollars to your workers to get them to work. If these dollars are less valuable, that means you've got to give more of these dollars to the store in order to get groceries. Prices are higher because you're trying to buy some drop of money that is not worth as much as it used to be, which means you've got to give more of that less valuable money to give. Not only is that going to mess us up, that's going to have impacts on our trade. American, so the money ain't worth as much, we're going to raise our prices. American products are sold throughout the world based on American prices. So if we raise the price of SunDrop in America, Americans have to pay more for SunDrop. Japanese people have to pay more for SunDrop. Chinese people have to pay more for SunDrop. Indian people have to pay more for SunDrop. French people have to pay more for SunDrop because we've got to, they have to take their money and turn it into our money because it's our money that we need to pay our workers. So what ends up happening, our products end up being more expensive because they've got to take their money, they've got to take more of their money to give more of our money that they're going to need in order to buy the same amount of our product, right? So it's going to cost them more of their money which means it's going to cost their customers more of their money. So American products are more expensive on the world stage, which means, are we going to be exporting some much stuff? Uh, no, the French people, the Canadian people, the giant Japanese people, they're not going to be buying as much syndrome because it's more expensive. So they could be buying more drink, more Canada dry or whatever, that's us in Canada there, whatever soap, soap is in Canada instead of American soap. Foreign products comparatively are more cheaper. Prices didn't change in Canada. Canada Dry costs the same in Canada, in Canada with Canadian money as it did yesterday. The sun drop is more expensive. So now somebody's going to go to the grocery store and say, well, the sun drop's more expensive, but Canada Dry is cheaper. Somebody's going to be crazy enough to actually get a Canada Dry gender. So we are not selling as much to them. They are going to sell more to us. And that's going to cause us to lose jobs. So you get higher prices and you lose jobs because the government's printing more money. It's like everything in economics that could possibly go wrong is just a big snowball effect. Yes. Um, I think I told you all a few weeks ago that a couple of years, they call economics the dismal science. Because if, as you said, every path that we go down, somebody's losing. So ultimately, to sum up the crowding out, because the government's borrowing, it's going to cause higher interest rates, it's going to cause higher prices. And yeah, I think the interest rate by how is it at prices? Because the money is worth less. So you got to give me more of it. No, I mean, it's not the money crowding out. Yeah, because it, what, uh, what, okay, the crowding out, uh, Crowding out the the borrowing. No, I mean not the interest rate, but how does it affect the prices? Oh, because if interest rates are more higher, that means I need a budget. I need more money to pay me back. So they said me so. I mean that's it. But uh, did I go back? Yeah. Oh no. Okay. Interest rates would be higher because we're competing with the government to borrow. Prices are going to be higher because we're competing with the government for the buying. But, I don't think you can hear about what happens if the government gets in financially good shape? 
to where they spent all that they can spend and then they have leftover money after that. Have any of you ever had leftover money at the end of the month? A couple times. And what did you do? You said, woo -hoo! And then what? Huh? Oh, what do you say? She said, you're good. What? She cries. I'm getting a card. You're getting a card this month? Finally, she's doing that. Because mine's down. Yeah, I already direct deposit all a uh, percentage of my paycheck in my savings as soon as it gets in the month. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's a good thing to do. Direct deposit your paycheck in your checking account, and I have automatic transfer every month. That's a fantastic thing to do. You do it at the beginning of the month, not at the end of the month. You make it be there at the end of the month. Exactly. So, if the government finds themselves with extra money, well, one thing they can do, pay off some of their debt. We've already borrowed money from other people, well, let's pay off some of them once. That's a beautiful thing. You know, you find yourself with extra money, why not knock down a credit card bill? Why not make an extra card payment or two? Get rid of some of those bills. So get rid of it. Help put out that fire now so it's less than every computer. That's what I do with like insurance and stuff. I'll go ahead and pay sell with my next payment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got a question. Yes, somewhat related. So when you buy a car and you pay them once, well, the more you pay them, is it the more your credit gets up or the more it's, I mean, it doesn't go up. So what, now, what you think if you pay more than the minimum payment? Yeah, so you, instead of paying for one month, I paid two months, three months, one month. The thing about credit is that interest doesn't go towards your credit. So the best thing to do is wait until you have a balance that goes onto your statement and then pay it full on your date. That'll still go towards your credit and then you don't have to pay interest. Let me ask you, <laughs> what she said. Let me. It depends. And let me next ask me first thing Thursday. Because I need a little bit more than six minutes and I need the rest of the people that have skipped out of the thing in here. Because I'm going to teach you know, um, life lessons. Uh, the life lesson number 312 for the semester. We're going to go on a quick little detour about a little bit about how, how, how that okay. works. How your credit score works, what they think about it. We've already talked about it a little bit about me competing against Haley. I mean, against Dr. Roberts, bar Haley's money, how much do she trust me to be able to pay her back? And they're going to be looking at how well you pay back, and there's a way to play the game. No, so thank you. Maybe you get your credit score, even if you don't have a credit score, without you actually paying the anymore. That's what's going to happen. Remind me Thursday. Okay? If you don't remind me early Thursday, then write that crap on Yogi Financial Girl. That's fine. So, <laughs> So you can pay off your own bills, and a good thing, well, good thing about paying off what? When do they have surplus? When you're trying to slow the economy down, right? You're trying to slow the economy down so they're not spending as much money. But then if they turn around and well, we don't want to spend money, we're, we're going to take this money, extra money we have, and we're going to pay off bills. That's responsible. But what happens when they pay off those bills? It's going to go in the hands of you and me, whoever lent them the money, and what are they going to do with it? They're going to spend it. They're trying to slow down spending, and if our bills is going to cause us to increase spending. So that's kind of a problem there. Well, not unless you give it to the country that you are from first. Well, yeah, if they pay off foreign debt instead of paying off the local debt, yes, but politically, but yeah, that would be a way to do it. But overall, it's going to put money back into the market, which is going to help lower interest rates, raise investment. Increased consumption, a lot of times that's the opposite of what they're trying to do. They're trying to, they got the surplus because they're trying to slow things down. The next thing they can do is just, well, we're going to get this extra money, we're going to hold on to it. We ain't going to spend, we, we took it from you, we're not going to spend it at a moment, and we're not going to pay off any debts to you, we're going to wait until at this time, speed off the economy, speed up the economy, and then we have this extra money, and we'll go ahead and speed, use it to help speed it up by paying off our bills then. So, which is better to speed up the economy? It depends on who you are. That was a question you asked earlier. It depends on who you are. If you are a liberal or a Democrat, you're Robin Hood. You're trying to take money from the poor and give it, take money from the rich and give it to the poor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're a politician, you're trying to take from everybody. No. Uh, but if you, you're Robin Hood, you try to take from the rich and give it to the poor. The other way I describe 
them as a protective older brother. You're looking out for the people that need help. So they're like setting up programs to use the government as a tool to make do these things in society. Changing government as the means to take care of these social issues or whatever it happens to be. So the last thing the Democrats are going to want to say is, well, we want to, if we want to slow down the economy, it, yeah. they don't want to slow down the economy by cutting spending. That's actually the next slide. If they want to speed up the economy, they're not going to say, let's speed up the economy by lowering taxes so we don't have as much money to work with. Uh -uh. What they're going to say is, the best thing for us to do is hate Microsoft. Stop. And when we're done hating Microsoft, the best thing they're going to say is, if we need more money, more spending in the economy, well, this is an opportunity for more us to do more of the good work that we were looking to do. So we will speed up the economy by increasing spending and doing good things. If we need to slow down the economy, well, we don't want to cut spending on these programs that we think were so important that we put them in place in the first place. We need to slow down the economy. Well, we're going to raise taxes cause you to spend less money. And we, the government, are going to keep spending money doing good work that we're looking to do. This is what the Democrats think. There you just, government is their tool for social change. So they don't want to take money away from them to do the work that they want to do. So if anything, they're going to take the money away from you. Where the Republicans, they're the true, do what, not do what others just do what they know. They're the true, you, know, you do what you want to do and let me do what I want to do. Liberty in a nutshell. You do what you want to do, I do what I want to do. So the Republicans are like, get out of the way. Because as we've seen, every one of these government actions in all of these slides has some unintended consequences. There's good, there's bad with everything. So they're sort of, let's get the government out of the way. So what they're going to say is, we want to speed up the economy. The way we do that is cut taxes. Put more money in the hands of businesses so they can create more jobs. Put more money in the hands of people that are going to spend it that's going to create more jobs. Get the government out of the way because government is inherently inefficient. But then if we got to slow down the economy, the way to do it is, well, we look at some of this government spending on some of the things that we're spending money on and say, do we really need to do it? Let's trim out some of that because the government is large and inefficient. So the answer is, it depends on who you are. They're, neither group is evil. I've said that before when we've talked. Neither group is evil. They just have a different set of priorities. This group is saying we're using the government as our tool for making changes in society, where this group is saying we're using private individuals to make changes in society. Letting people and organizations do it instead of using the government as a tool to do it. Old school, you were like the church, you know, back in America, where you found it you know, 40 years ago, the you know, church, whatever, stuff. So, Go back to Europe and all you know, the church was the tool that was being done running all the monasteries and all of the, the orphanages and stuff were run by various religious organizations. Well, I'm using the word the church to sort of all encompassing. And what's happened, the church has kind of fallen down on a job, so people are leaning to looking to a poor for the government to do the work. The church has kind of let the government do the work of taking care of the orphans and the widows. Remember that verse for those yelled to go to church. Just but it's just which tool is the mechanism you're going to use to affect change? And that's going to be dictating, well, when we need to speed up or slow down, what's the right thing to do? Are you with me? So that's politics 101 a week after the election. So, we'll take it if we So, um, you with me? Okay, well, it's time to go when we get back, whatever that time is, Tuesday, Thursday, whatever that day is, we're going to start with the non -credit. If somebody reminds me, we'll talk about credit for a few minutes, and then we'll get into non discretionary and, I don't know, we might actually finish this chapter. So, one of the other things yeah. I'm working I, I, I dare us to finish the chapter in credit studies. Yeah. Boom! I said, yeah, to the, uh, the only thing that I really learned from the other teacher was...